And welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time to go through the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. We'll say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Demola Akingbola, the publisher of uh, The Podium Media. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here again. Good morning. Thank good morning you. to you. Let's start with the Punch newspapers this morning. One of the things that we just spoke about, and that is uh, kidnapping, uh, is uh, the big uh, you know, story this morning on the Punch. It says uh, over there, uh, 100 Kaduna victims in bandits' dens, others leave in fear. That's from uh, Khan. Uh, bandits attacked church on March 21st, kidnapped five persons, says Hayab. Gunmen abduct Catholic priest, or your couple, six others in Kaduna and Niger. And uh, Buhari orders service chiefs to identify and take out sponsors of bandits. Also, federal government meets uh, NARD, the National Association of Resident Doctors, moves to stop April 1st doctor strike. Buhari departs for UK. PDP knocks APC on health care. Also this morning, court stops SIM, uh, SIM cards blocking on April uh, linkage deadline. Customs propose ban on vehicles above seven years. And um, also this morning, uh, we have here, Song Wolu presents 13 cars to Lagos outstanding teachers. One or two others, tears as suspected for any Q22 in Eboi, Enugu, Umahi, Fumes. So those are the big ones on the uh, Punch newspaper this morning. And on the Nation newspaper, Presidency, findings on Boko Haram sponsors, shocking. Money being transferred to terrorists from UAE, many under arrest. Lagos raises panel on La Suvisi. Motorcycles, donkeys, bringing arms, says Ali. Tunumbu says, I meant hiring of 50,000, not 50 million, into security agencies. If you cut videos of that colloquium, uh, you know, it's, it's been going viral over statements that the former Lagos governor said about uh, you know, encouraging the government to recruit about 50 million Nigerians into you know, security agencies. And now he's saying he meant hiring of 50,000, not 50 million. Nexim's $50 million for agro-export. Agro Islamic Council attacks can on hijab, others. 30 cows die mysteriously in Ondo. Don't sell UTME forms above 3,500 jam ones. And egos and qualifiers unbitten. As well as this one, doctors list conditions to shelve strike. All right, now to the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning. 15 killed as headsmen strike in Eboi. And of course, as he jets out, Buhari orders security chiefs to crush bandits and their sponsors. APC membership registration ends, fresh controversy begins. Also, Quara, or court rather res restrains Kwara government from uh, taking over in Learubo. Uh, tenure elong elongation, IGP knows his fate on the 16th of April. And uh, once again, Bolatinibu says, 50 million youths, I made accidental verbal mistake. Senate queries federal government's $1.5 billion, uh, uh, 995 million euros loan proposals. And a few others this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. Gunmen kill Reverend Father and three parishioners in Bainway. You can also find here a couple abducted in Ibadan. 2023 Legislators Forum demands zoning of presidency to North Central. And 800 stolen Nigerian assets worth $400 million linked to public officials in the UAE. Those are the papers that we have uh, currently. Uh, Mr. Akimbola, over to you. Morning once again. Um, the papers are quite loaded this morning. I would like to start from uh, the headline on the front page of the Guardian. It says that Nigeria loses five seven billion yearly to medical tourism. That is quite um, disturbing, but not surprising really, because we, we've always known that we lack adequate healthcare facilities in Nigeria um, to take care of the needs of the people. Um, but more importantly, I think it's something that should worry those in, in, in authorities. It's a big shame uh, that a country of Nigeria's size and the enormous resources that we have has not been able um, to put enough healthcare facilities in place to, to I mean, not to stop, but to reduce medical tourism. I mean, all over the world, leaders do find 
the need to go abroad once in a while. Uh, but in a situation whereby every Nigerian leader gets to UK to America um, for medical treatment, it's something that government should really be ashamed of. Um, we've, we've been on this for a very long time, and I really don't know uh, when this will stop. Also, um, I'd like to talk about the president's directive to security shift to cross parties. I think that's just a huge joke. But while he was here as a sitting commander in chief, they were not able to crush bandits. So if it's not here, what difference will it make? Um, it's just a sandbite. And more importantly, I think it's time for us to seek external support. Um, we will never get tired of hearing stories of kidnapping, of killing. And my question to all Nigerians is for how long are we going to allow this to continue? Government obviously has exhausted all its options as things are now, okay? So maybe we need to seek a sense of support. If mm -hmm. we really value human life in Nigeria, it's time for us to seek a sense of support because, quite frankly, I do not see the Nigerian security services being able to stem the tide of these killings. Every day, you hear of killings in all parts of Nigeria, especially in the north and now in the southeast. So I really do not know if we want things to continue like this. Okay, in other countries, this is enough reason for the president to have been summoned and for the National Assembly to probably have, have, have commenced impeachment proceedings. Because look, if you cannot do a job that you have been elected to do, then what are you still doing there? Okay, so I mean, it's when you open this party's day, you just know that you find something about Fulani Earth men, about kidnapping, about murder. So crime is on. Um, on the increase, it's, it has got to a stage where we need to say no. We okay. cannot continue this way. Okay. Um, so to us, we're talking about um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. State, um, um, yes, yes, Apologies please. to button. I wanted to go back to a story we saw on the front page of The Guardian. You know, billions of Naira we lose every okay. year to medical tourism. You know, tying that to the yeah. mass exodus of doctors we see in Nigeria every day, Plus, yeah. the warning yeah. strike that NAD embarked on and the strike they're about to start tomorrow. I don't understand yeah. how we can, you know, link these together, seeing that the presidency, all the government should yeah. be investing in medical care at home, but we rather seek medical care abroad while doctors, you know, suffer poor welfare. Yeah, this is a result of decades of neglect of the health sector. If you do an analysis of the budget of Nigeria in the last 20 years, what percentage has gone to healthcare? Okay, that is in terms of budget allocation. And what percentage has actually been expended? Okay, you have to factor in corruption, you have to factor in diversion of funds. So, in the first instance, we are not budgeting enough money for the healthcare sector. And to make this worse, maybe 50% of what is being budgeted is actually being used. So it's, it, 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 it's a very serious problem. And doctors will surely leave Nigeria as long as they find better opportunities. This is not about being patriotic, OK? There's something we can do. Let's make sure we pay them well. Let's pay them on time. And let's provide facilities. Mm -hmm. I often wonder why government has to wait all the time for doctors and other professionals to go on strike or to announce warning strike before they do the need for. Okay, you know that this is not right. So why do we have a minister in charge of labor and employment? Why do we have a minister in charge of health? What do they do? Okay, so why uh, must we always wait until things get to this stage before we take action? Oh, those, those shows are, that we are not just taking healthcare seriously. Yeah. Those are you know, really big questions. And of course, you know, now that the president also is um, once again going to the, in the UK for you know, health uh, reasons, as yeah. uh, said, it's also not a good sign of yeah. you know, any of this improving it, you know, soon. Um, quickly also share your thoughts on the story on the uh, nation this morning saying that uh, the, pre the government rather is shocked at the findings uh, for Boko Haram sponsors. It says, presidency findings on Boko Haram sponsors, shocking. Money being transferred to terrorists from UAE, many under arrest. If government says that it's shocked, then that is pure hypocrisy. Because we've always known that these guys have a standard backing, unless security agencies have not been allowed to, to, to that to that um, responsibility. We've always known. 
that these guys have some form of backing, they have enough cash, because you wonder where do they get all these arms and ammunitions from. So if government is saying, oh, we are shocked, then okay, good, thanks to the federal government for this revelation, what are we going to do about it? That is the next thing. What are you going to do about it? Okay, so I'm not shocked because I've always known that these guys have a standard backing. Okay, and we need to seek external support. I keep saying that it, it's time has come for Nigeria to seek external support. Let's dump our pride. Let's ask countries that can come to our aid. Maybe in terms of gathering intelligence, in terms of funding the military forces, in terms of training, we need help. It's critical that we need help. Okay, but is so it I'm not personally shocked. Is it, is it yeah. you know, for you also surprising that in the last decade we've not been able to name one person who has sponsored, either with arms or with finances, uh, the whole of, you know, the Boko Haram sector and, you know, and, and, and the likes? Is it shocking to you that, you know, in a decade we've not been able to f just figure out one person? Not really shocking because in Nigeria, as long as we are well connected, you you you, you get away with anything. Uh, I remember years ago, um, a particular former governor of Bondo State, Alim Dume, who is now in the Senate, was being touted as one of the sponsors of Boko Haram. What have we done? <laughs> Nothing. So we've always known that these guys are sponsors. But of course, as long as we are well connected in Nigeria, nothing happens. We make noise and it goes. So then you ask, what has been the, 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 the focus of security agencies? Because once you are able to get your intelligence gathering right, then 80% or 90% of the job is done. All right. Right. So we need to know where is the support coming from and block it. Okay. So okay. when, when so we talk about... For me, it, it is not too shocking, yeah. Okay. So when we talk about, you know, insecurity, would one way to solve this be the recruitment of more Nigerians into, you know, the army? Because we saw uh, former Lagos State Governor Bola Tinubu advocate this, you know, during his uh, colloquium. And he said uh, we needed 50 million Nigerians recruited into security agencies that should, they should be fed with cassava and things like that. People didn't take that <clears throat> very lightly. But he's clarifying now that he meant 50,000. 50, Is that what we need anyway? Yeah. It's one of the things that we need. There's no doubt that Nigeria is under police. There's no doubt about that. We do not have enough, okay? But beyond recruitment, I would even say we need more than 50,000. But beyond the recruitment of new people into the security agencies, the existing security personnel should be taken care of. We are not taking good care of our security personnel. Mm. They are human beings. They have families. We are not taking good care of them. So their commitment is zero. Their commitment is zero. You can't blame them. Okay, Nigeria is a country that if you die in the service of Nigeria, I do not know what you get. Okay, you probably will get little or nothing. So yes, we need to bring in more people, but more importantly, we need to have a very robust and realistic welfare package for the existing security people. And of course, the new equipment, the war against terror is not, is not a verbal war. You do not give directive crush bandits, you jet off to the UK. Do they have the equipment? Are they well motivated? Do we have enough intelligence gathering mechanisms in place? So yes, I support the call for us to bring in more youth, but if you recruit them and you don't take care of them, they end up turning to bandits themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they start conniving with criminals and you, that doesn't mean you can do about it, which is what is the problem with Nigerian police today. You but take is, is it... Policemen, they look for money. Is it really possible, you know, and can we really agree that we don't have enough of, you know, the logistics and the intelligence and the equipment, you know, to crush some of these things? We invest billions into, you know, these sectors every year. Um, we're dealing with maybe hundreds, you, know, you really can't, you know, tell the numbers, hundreds or maybe a, you know, a few thousands of these criminals. Um, is it really possible that we, with the level of investment that we, sh we should have or we are expected to have, you know, put into security in the last few years, into intelligence and into, you know, logistics and, you know, arms and ammunition, we still cannot round up these persons? Or is it just a lack of political will? You talk of investments. I would rather say investment of paper. Investment of paper. My brother investment on paper 
we hear huge amounts being hammered, we hear huge amounts being committed, but in real fact, can you honestly say that we are spending up to 70% of the budgeted amount that we're spending it on the purposes for which they were intended? Nobody. Yeah. You cannot rule out the influence of corruption in the way that we're executing the war against terror. I mean, last week, we discussed the service chiefs, the immediate, uh, no, the, uh, the service chiefs, the Amosus and the rest of them who were alleged to have diverted funds. We still have the case of Dasuke. Okay, so when you talk about huge amounts, huge amounts on paper, nobody's seeing the money. If the amount of money Nigeria has been voting for defense issues, if we spend even 90% of that money, we won't be in this situation today. But of course, when you vote 10 Naira, those are the top, maybe two-thirds of it is gone. Contractors get contracts which the poor execute or which don't execute at all. So it is so easy to say, oh, we're voting so much money, but is the money getting to the right destination? Mm. We are not. Since the Minister of Defense spoke about three weeks ago about the fact that, look, we spent so much money, we're not getting results, we haven't heard anything again. Nobody has picked on that to say, look, why don't we investigate? Why don't we probe? Why don't we call for external support? Because it's like, <laughs> unless we want to deceive ourselves, we are not able to win this war. All right. At least so far, as at this morning, as we speak. Mr. Mr. Yes. Mr. Ademola, moving away from security, this issue yeah. we seem to see every day in Nigeria. On the front page of the Nigerian Tribune this morning, there's this one here that reads, 800 stolen Nigerian assets worth $400 million linked to public officials in the UAE. My question is, is a corruption-free Nigeria even possible? For now, with the way things are, I would say it is not possible. You know why? As long as we treat corrupt officials with levity, as long as we slap them on the wrist with very um, uh, ridiculous judgments, then corruption will continue to fly, not even work. We are not harsh enough. Our corruption laws have too many loopholes. That's why a corruption case would take you years, 34 years, and at the end of the day, <laughs> what does the guy get? Go and say no more, literally. So we need to intensify the work against corruption by making very good example of those who have been found to be corrupt. There are too many loopholes. People come to court pretending to be healed, and the court says, okay, go and treat yourself. So many instances of celebrated cases that have ended up being media trials. Media trials. The EFCC makes too much noise in the newspapers, put on the TV, nothing happens thereafter. So there's enough incentive, incentive in court. There's enough incentive in Nigerian public service for people to be corrupt. Because they know that once you steal 10 Naira, you keep 4 Naira, which we use to settle <laughs> law enforcement agencies. And per adventure, you get tried, you go with a very um, I don't know, lenient sentence. Look at China. Look at other countries. Okay? So those laws need to be reviewed. The laws are too lenient. And of course, the law enforcement agents themselves, are they happy with the work that they're doing? Are they happy? Most law enforcement agents are happy to connive with criminals, to connive with corrupt officials, to share part of the loot and ensure that the, the, the the prosecutor is messed up. So many cases, courts, judges have lambasted EFCC prosecutors for very sloppy prosecution. It is not a coincidence. So a corruption in Nigeria is possible, but we need to put things in place. The laws need to be applied. The law, look at, I keep saying, in 1984, during the first tenure of President Muhammad Buhari, three people were caught with narcotics, okay? And they were tried, okay, one of them, literatively, and they were killed. Now, for a very long time, we never heard of narcotics. 
But when President Mabangida came, he liberalized so many things. And today, Nigeria is one of the, I don't know, we are in the forefront of drug um, marketing, sale of drugs, courier of drugs. So the laws need to be had. If we want to stop corruption, we need to make sure the laws are really, really harsh. And we need to be sure that EFCC and other law enforcement agents, they, 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 they are motivated, they are encouraged to do their job. It's okay. difficult to bribe an average policeman in America or in the UK. Why? Because there's nothing that you want to use to entice him or her. There's nothing. The system provides. But in Nigeria, you are asking a policeman in EFCC to investigate someone who has stolen billions, as someone who has promised to give him 20 million naira, money he may never see till he dies if he remains Nigerian police. Why won't he cooperate? So those are the issues. Okay. All right. And um, you know, I think you may also, with the time we have left, quickly also share on you know the you know the once again the president uh, jetting out to the UK to you know get uh, treatment. Uh, is there any way that this can be defended by the presidency or his spoke, uh, spokespersons? Well, we all know our president is a old man, so he needs to go for medical checkup from time to time. But what I still don't understand is what is the nature of the president's ailment that he cannot be treated by Nigerian doctors? Or is it purely a matter of trust? Is it a trust issue? Okay, if it's a routine medical checkup, why well, was it just abroad? Worst case scenario, we bring the doctors in here. Because this is not the time for the president not to be on ground in Nigeria. This is not the time. The timing is strong. Mm. But again, we can't deny him his medical vacation. It's, it's part of the, it's part of his um, entitlement. And of course, we know that it's old. It needs regular medical checkup. We can't. Okay. Mm. All right. But it doesn't speak well. It doesn't speak well at all, yeah. Mr. Adimola right. Hakimbola, publisher, Podium Media, thank you very much for your time this very beautiful Wednesday morning on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me here. Happy birthday once again, Sarah. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hey. Akimbola. <laughs> Good morning. All right. Uh, we, of course, uh, will move away from here and then share with you what happened today um, on the 31st of March, many years ago. Um, uh, stay with us here on The Breakfast.